Hey guys, I'm so happy to be with everybody today. I'm excited about today's episode in our week of prayer. Today we're going to be talking about, I will pray until heaven opens, the power of fasting and prayer. And I couldn't think of anybody else that I'd love to be with us better than Pastor Daryl and Lori Booker from Lima and Lima First Church in Lima, Ohio. Guys, thank you for coming on and being a part of this today, guys. Well, it's an honor to be with you and with everybody else. And uh, we, we thank you for, for thinking of us. Absolutely. You know, I was with you guys just several weeks ago, we've had a relationship the last year and a half or so, but when I was at your church, we're in your office, we were just talking about prayer, the presence of God, and you began to talk about the conviction that you have for fasting and prayer that both of you guys have, uh, just as, as co-pastors, as co-leaders, in, in Lima, and you mentioned to me that when you first got there, you talked about the spiritual climate, the spiritual atmosphere, uh, the activity of the spirit that was there, and that you really sensed that God wanted to do much more um, than what was taking place. And you felt led to really incorporate fasting and prayer, not just as an addendum or something that you do the first of the year, but really a part of what God had called you to do and what you felt that God wanted to do at your church. So just, just tell us about uh, that process when you first got there and how God led you to incorporate fasting and prayer. Sure. We got here um, in the fall of 2018, um, about a, a year and a half before the, the world went crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And so we walked into a situation to where uh, we just needed God to move. We knew that the, the church had gone through a season of difficulty, but we knew uh, from Jump Street that something greater had to be done. We We've been a part of revival uh, for many, many years, many, many decades, but we knew that God wanted to do something supernatural. And so uh, from the beginning, uh, we instituted um, fasting and not just, okay, we're going to fast, but we started incorporating that and teaching that of what we called pop-up classes. And you are, you are a great, great part of that. Yeah, we just felt like the, um, the church had transitioned really from kind of the way we grew up. You know, we, we grew up in the Assemblies of God and fasting was a part of our upbringing. You know, we fasted before we went on choir tours or before we were going to camp and just over the years that had seemed to just maybe fade away a little bit. So when we came, we recognized that uh, God wanted to impart something to these people. And so we did pop-up classes, what we called it. And we spent about six weeks on a Wednesday night, which is random, that we had over a hundred people show up right from Jump Street. They were hungry for the things of God. And so we taught on fasting first. That's the first thing that we did and then began to incorporate mm -hmm. the three days yeah. of the month. Laid, yeah. that, laid that foundation. foundation. Uh, many people, they get so confused when it comes to fasting and they will, uh, many times they'll fast thinking that they're going to twist the hand of God to make it happen. That's my spiritual trump card that I'm laying down. But we we knew that we wanted to, to get this off on the right foot. And so yeah. we taught that. And then we started in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, January, we started the first three days of the month, we would fast. And that... Um, that Wednesday night of that, we would we would come in uh, of the first Wednesday night of the month. We would come in and we would kind of have a, a celebration. We actually called it hunger and thirst. Uh, and so we're hungering and thirsting from God. We have a time of, of testimony and a time of prayer and a time of worship. And it, it really uh, turned the tide for this congregation. So you not only taught on fasting and prayer, you would fast and pray yourself the first three days of every month. You incorporated teaching and prayer and fasting. That's that's so good. So what are some of the things 
that you would teach the congregation. One of the first things that we taught was it really is an expectation for the believer to fast. Like, mm -hmm. not a command necessarily, but there's an expectation for us to fast as a discipline before the Lord. From Jesus himself. Yeah, Jesus fasted. So if nothing else, right? <laughs> Jesus fasted. And so to follow his example, um, we taught that you you don't fast. Pastor just mentioned it to twist God's arm. You're not, you know, throwing that trump guard down before the Lord. Really, we taught that fasting prepares your heart for God's answer. Yeah. And um, we taught the practical side of fasting. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we think we have to be like Moses or Jesus <laughs> and, you know, fast everything, including water. And it's simply not the case. Scripture is full of so many different kinds of fasts. And so we encouraged our people to get before God and ask him what it is that he wanted them to fast. To come in with a plan. Have a plan. We have story after story. One little guy was so moved to fast. Um, and his parents were helping him navigate what that looked like for a fourth grader. And he decided that he would fast his Totino's pizza <laughs> that he would have after school every day. And instead of having Totino's pizza, he would have grapes or vegetables or whatever. And that little guy yep. in fourth grade spent 21 days fasting and God moved in his life so powerfully. He saw a witness to his school teacher. He saw friends coming to church. And so I think that was important to understand that we all can fast something. something. I'm at AGTS wrapping up a doctorate degree. And in my last class, uh, we talked about that. And, and, and the conclusion was to really die, it's, it's food. It's laying down food that really is a a death to the flesh yes. like nothing. I mean, I can fast social media and maybe think, man, I really want to look. But if I'm fasting food, I feel that from the inside out at every angle of of, of who I am is, is dying. Now, I know you guys have experienced explosive growth. You've almost five times what you were. 250 when you got there, well over a thousand now. And and you didn't attribute it to a good marketing campaign or you strategically got, you know, greeters in the right place and all that's important. Now yeah. that's important, yeah. but you don't attribute it to to a uh, a leadership uh implementation, but God doing it through fasting and prayer. So what are some of the things that you saw as God began to grow the work through what you told me through the fasting and prayer? I think a big part of it is alignment. Mm -hmm. It put all of us moving in the same direction, with the same goal, with the, the same objective. And that even trickled over into how we did our church services. Uh, this may kind of sound kind of funny, but we examined even during fasting, uh, we examined what our services actually looked like. And we came to the determination, we want to spend every single moment in the presence of God. We've got parking lot issues here. And so with multiple services and three services now, we have to be We've got to be on time. Otherwise, the parking lot is jammed up and it's bad news, right? So we found that even in the middle of fasting, the Lord helped us to get our priorities straight, mm -hmm. get us in alignment with what the Holy Spirit wanted to do. And it's funny, when you cut the fat and the things that don't really matter within a church service, it's amazing how much time you can find yeah. in the presence of the Lord. And my goodness, you have time for altar call. Yeah. You have time for people responding where, where, where you're at. And really a lot of that came yeah. as a result of us fixing our eyes on the Lord and just removing those things that just really didn't matter. Well, it's biblical too. When uh, in the book of Daniel, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the the boys, the three Hebrew boys, when they fasted, the Bible says that God gave them wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. And when you break down that word knowledge, it's insight. It's it's creative thinking. It's strategy. Personally, just as 
as uh, the pastor hats off, the ministry hats off, just Daryl and Lori, what has fasting done for you personally in your relationship with Christ? For me, it's helped me to focus, especially when you are in a fast. There's something, Jensen Franklin, he uses the words, um, instead of using flesh, he uses the word king stomach. <laughs> when you conquer king king stomach, there is a there is a supernatural laser focus. And I think as pastors uh, and church leaders, we've got so many irons in the fire mm -hmm. that for me personally, when I enter into a fast, it it is not something necessarily that I regret. I look forward nice. because I know that the things that don't matter are going to be pushed off to the mm -hmm. side and that I am going to have a laser focus, not only with my eyes, but with my ears. It's almost as if there's a stillness for me personally, there's a stillness when I come in that the quiet, the voice of the Lord just gets louder and louder. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me personally, on so many levels, but probably one in particular fast that sticks out to me was in um, 2020. And my mom suddenly became ill with COVID. Young, 72, vibrant, wonderful woman of God. And so we began to pray and fast for her healing. And we knew that God was going to just deliver her. She was going to raise up from that sick bed. But I learned that fasting prepares your heart for God's answer. And my mom went on to be with Jesus. And um, it was tragic, you know, it's it's your mom. But I believe because I had fasted and I had prayed that I was okay with what God decided. And he set me up because I had spent that extra time yeah. focused on him, his plan, his purpose, you minister to the Lord when you're fasting, but the Lord ministers <laughs> yeah. to you in even greater measure. I've I've heard it said, you know, prayer gets God's attention on us and fasting gets our attention on God. A lot of times after that third, fourth, fifth day, it just seems like there's an open heaven yes. and you're sensitive with the waitress, with that keen word of knowledge. You're sensitive to what God is saying. It's like, it, it does something for me that nothing else does, not even extended prayer, not extended Bible study, not listening to teaching for three hours, and all of that stuff has a real place in our spiritual formation. I've heard it said that fasting uh, speeds you up to slow down. <laughs> you know, you just get to the place where you just anticipate. Part of it's our expectation. We come ready. When we're fasting, it's kind of like, all right, God, here we are. We're all yeah. in for you. And I think God honors that. And our spirit just communes with him. Yeah. And he's so faithful to meet us where we're at. Tender. Your heart is tender <laughs> towards the things of God when your stomach is empty. It's a, you, you call it many times. There's a whole, a holy tension that is there. We don't understand. This just simply does not make sense because I got to have something to eat or I'm going to get ang angry or aggravated or something angry. But when you do that, something extraordinary takes place and it's supernatural. There's something about when, when Jesus said, you got to take up your cross, there's something about dying to our flesh that releases and attracts the presence of God like nothing else. And, and, and I don't know anything else that crucifies the flesh more than fasting and prayer. You know, um, I, I'm reminded of when the disciples came to Jesus a certain time and, and they, 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 you know, the Bible says in Matthew 10, 7, and 8, he gives them this commission, as you go, preach this message, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons. So they had done that. And part of that was they, they had victory over demonic possession, strongholds. But one day they ran into somebody that had a demon that didn't respond like the scores of others. It didn't move. 
and they came to Jesus perplexed. They, they, they said something like this, Jesus, we just tried to cast a demon out and everybody else that we prayed for got set free, but this one didn't bow, it didn't move. And he said, this one's only gonna come out through fasting and prayer. Within today's society, um, it's not gonna work a, a fancy little encouraging, encouraging word, uh, uh, great music. It's gonna take more right. than that. Uh, it's gonna take a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Yeah. And we can't shy away from that. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't go looking for a devil under every rock, but you can, uh, you can yeah. bet your bottom dollar that when he raises his head, we take care of it like that. And it's all because we have been in a season of prayer and fasting. When Jesus told them, hey, listen, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. You can't, you have to be in a moment in a season in your life to where that is kind of going on all the time. It, we're, we've prepared for these moments that we don't even right. know is coming right around the corner. And when these moments come, we are ready to nail it and take care of it. Why? Because we have been in the presence of the Lord. We've been fasting. We have been praying. We've been seeking the face of God and he equips us with the necessary tools to take care of those more fierce demons. Yeah. And it's done by prayer and fasting. Yeah. What would you say to someone that's watching right now that says, you know what, I tried fasting. I fasted half a day. I was so hungry. I went to the Chinese buffet and ate all the King Chow chicken right out of the, right out of the buffet. <laughs> you know, that's not for me. What would you say to someone that's maybe been a little bit nervous to fast and pray and hasn't incorporated fasting and prayer? I would say this, um, you start off small. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is, and this is pun intended, we bite off more than we can chew. Mm -hmm. You've got to come up with a plan. Um, you really do need to see your physician. That is yeah. using wisdom. If you're on all these medications and mm -hmm. you use use wisdom and, and go, but you, we, we did what we call practice fast. We did. We yeah. practiced fast. And we and and it's it was even as small as, you know what? If you drink five cups of coffee of a morning, only drink two, you know, and spend that time in praying. You you wean yourself, you wean yourself mm -hmm. in. I would I think uh, a lot of times if you're not careful, fasting um can really become rigid for someone. It can become very, very religious. I know for me, I, I struggled, um, uh, with, it has to be a certain way and it has to be at a certain time. And I have to do these certain things. And it, it really became religious for me until, uh, I woke up one day and I did some studying on my own, uh, and realized that, listen, that that's, that's not the white, right way to do it. It's about, uh, it's, it's really yeah. about the condition of your heart. And so for someone going in, mm -hmm. um, and I know we're using all of these, these food terms, cold Turkey, right? <laughs> uh, I would strongly suggest, um, a period, uh, if you're going to go into a fast, spend three or so days just getting off of caffeine. Mm -hmm. Caffeine alone will leave you in terrible, terrible <laughs> headaches. Yeah. And so uh, just get rid of that without entering into a fast. Once you get through those headaches and all that stuff and you've gotten off of it, then you're able to do uh you're able to do more. And so I, I would say start off small. I don't know about if. Yeah, I think that fasting is a heart. It's a matter of your heart before God. And so if you're, this is just talking straight. If your head hurts so bad that you're going to literally get sick, throw up <laughs> or something like that, take a spoonful of peanut butter or, you know, take a sip of coffee. I've had people call and say, Pastor Lori, I'm passed out on the floor. I'm so sick. And I'll say, Girl, go eat a cracker. You know, like it's okay. It's your heart that God or is bowl interested of soup. in. A bowl of soup. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sip yeah. on some broth or yeah. do something. There are some practical things that yeah. need to be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all come come by by just being taught. Yeah. What's what's right. Yeah. yeah. You know, when Jesus fasted, 
he wasn't, his itinerary wasn't full every day. He, he, he went to a desert and shut his life down. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't have, and, and most of our audience doesn't have that luxury. And so m- when I fast, um, I, I don't eat, but I'll drink juice. I'll drink fresh fruit juice. I'll yes. drink broth. Yep. Um, yes. Just to just to help me through the day, and and here's what I would say too, and and this is not a, a cop out. You got to have grace. If 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 I've really got to hear God, if I fast more than three days, I usually on the third day will know if I have grace or not. It's not that well, yeah, it's, I'm still hungry, but if I'm getting sick, I know that I need to eat. Yes. So, um, and and grace. When I talk about grace to fast, it's the it's that empowerment by the Spirit that empowers us to fast. I don't want to just die to my flesh and will through it. I want God's grace and leading to be on it. And you know, if you've never fasted, it probably would not be wise to say, I'm going to start with 40 days. <laughs> you know, if, if you've never fasted, 40 start minutes. With a, <laughs> yes. Start with a day. Right. Start yeah. with three days. And, and here's something too. If it, it's fasting and prayer. So if, if your prayer life is weak, just start praying more. It's not, sometimes I've gone on fasts and I'm not praying and there's no grace Make sure you set aside time to pray. Don't just fast. Yes, that's very important. I, I know for this year going into the, to 2024, starting January 1, we're leading our congregation on a 21-day fast. They will have their plan in place for them personally. But for us, we just don't like, okay, we'll see you in 21 days after it's all over. We provide activities that on this particular evening, we're going to have online, uh, an hour of online worship with Pastor Lucas and Pastor Lily in their home. Uh, we'll, we'll do some of that. We'll come together here in the church on a, on a particular evening and, and spend some time in God's presence. We provide activities for them over those 21 days mm-hmm. uh, so that it gets them in a routine and gears them up that it it helps them to get focused. And we're not just focused individually, but we're focused corporately as well. So pastor Daryl, pastor Lori, we're going to, we're going to conclude. But I I want you guys to pray. And I just want to say to the audience, we're going to conclude this moment, but I pray that this would open up into a prayer moment right where you're at, either as a church, at your home, in a small group, that you would take this moment at the end of this prayer and really come before the Lord. And as we start 2024, just ask God where he wants you to incorporate fasting and prayer and take a moment before God, ask him for grace, Ask him to to speak to you. Ask him for a plan because, you know, Pastor Lori and Pastor Daryl, they fasted the first three days of every month for their church as a part of what God's called them to do. You know, that's what God has called them to do. So what what I would love to see is, is, is for you to hear God today and hear what God wants you to do. So Pastor Daryl, Pastor Lord, would you take a moment and would you just pray over the audience that God would speak to them and minister to them how he wants them to fast and pray? Lord Jesus, we come to you and we thank you, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You are most high, glorious, all-powerful, all-knowing, sovereign King. And we desire you more than anything else. You're who we want. Your presence is our purpose. God, even more so than what we put into our bodies, even more than the food we eat, even more than the air we breathe, you're the one that we want. And God, we need your help. We want to serve you. We want to be disciplined in these areas of fasting and prayer that you've 
you expect us to do, but sometimes God, we just get things out of whack. And so I'm asking Lord that even now that those who are watching this podcast or listening to this Zoom call, Lord, that they would begin to have an unction by the Holy Spirit, a direction as to what you would have them to do when it comes to prayer and fasting. God, whether that's a a one day fast, a three day fast, perhaps 40 days, God, are they going to fast lunches? Are they going to fast entire meals or days or or are they going to just drink liquids? God, you are a specific God. We know that because your word gives specific kinds of fast for specific yes, purposes. Jesus. And so God, would you lead and guide and direct, give discernment, give wisdom, give direction, awesome. because we know that the days are short and we know that you're coming yes, back Jesus. soon. And we understand, Lord, that we are fighting the most fierce demon of all. And God, we're not going to shy away. We're not going to backtrack. We're not going to hide. We're going to yes, engage Jesus. in every uh, available resource yes, that Jesus. you have given us, Lord. We're going to engage in prayer. We're going to engage in intercession. And Lord, we're even going to deny our flesh and we're going to engage in fasting because we know, Lord, that you called us yes, and Jesus. equipped us to fight the good fight. And we will be victorious because you have been victorious. Lord, help us. We pray in Jesus name. And Lord, as we receive that strategy, you'll give us the strategy as we fast and we pray and you give us wisdom as we walk into that strategy and we come into alignment with you. I'm asking father that the heavens would open, that you would supernaturally impart an anointing that everyone we've not experienced before. Lord, in these end yes, times, yes, God, yes. we are not just battling God uh, in our minds. It says it's flesh and blood, but God, there are principalities and there are powers at work in each yes. and every church. God, yes. I'm asking God yes. that you would supernaturally help us, God, yes. to take hold of those strongholds and break them yes. in the mighty yes. name yes. of Jesus. Lord, we're asking that you would send a tsunami of your spirit that would overtake your church and would overtake your people, yes. that you would overtake your pastors, that we would operate in a supernatural anointing yes. that we have never known before. So this very day, God, as we prepare our hearts yes. for fasting and praying and supernaturally pressing in, yes. we're asking, oh God, that you would send us a revival yes. that no man can start and that no yes. man can can stop. God, use us for your kingdom. Use your people, God, this very day and help our churches to become alive like never before. Lord, we honor you. We bless you. We surrender ourselves to you, God, and we humble ourselves before you through fasting and prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Amen.